Thanks for joining me for another photography adventure. On this week's episode, we're about to head on a trip to West Cork, to some well-explored areas and some not-so-well-explored areas, in search of some great shots. But what's clear from the outset is that this area is simply stunning. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the trip. Four years ago, I came to this location to take a photograph of a very unusual tree. So, as you can see all around me, I am surrounded by, I think they're Scots pines, but they're straight up trees. But this tree stands out from everything else because it's after taking a shape of its own. I'll give you a look at the tree now, and then I'll talk you through what I'm going to do as far as photographing it. So I think you'd agree this is a very beautiful tree and most unusual as well. Now when I came here four years ago I was quite new to photography in the bigger scheme of things but I was definitely new to video recording so I totally messed up the video. My audio was an absolute disgrace and more importantly I think I don't think I did the location justice. So hopefully today I'll be able to give you a good feel for this entire area and get some nice shots of this tree. 
Now, conditions at the moment here, the sky is pretty much overcast, but there are a couple of pockets within the clouds, and I'm hopeful that the light, which the sun is just up here, can come in and light up this area. Because it is quite dark, you can just make it out. I think it's here. Uh, it's quite dark in relation to this area, but if I get some nice light in it, I hope that it will lift. Uh, at the moment, I've taken a couple of first test shots. I took one in landscape. I went for F11 because I want to have a D a deep depth of field, but I also might take a couple at F4 just to kind of blur everything out and just have that tree um, in focus. And then I've also moved into portrait orientation because with the trees that are here, it acts as a very nice framing, natural framing for the tree. Uh, and again at F11. So I'll give you a look at my F11 shots anyway here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly tweak my composition, I think, and probably go with a F4 but I'll talk you through that shot when it gets to it. One thing for certain anyway is it's summertime because I am being pestered by these midges that are swarming all around this area. So um, it's part of summer, I guess. So yeah, I've gone into F4 now and I'm able to get it at uh, 1 50th of a second. ISO is at 100 and I'm zoomed into 100 mil. Now I can go double that distance and actually I see a bit of light here, so I'm gonna grab this while I can, but I can go in double that distance and zoom directly into the tree, but it really then puts the tree on its own. There's nothing in regards to for it to stand out based on where it's located with all of these straight trees around that. Um, within the actual detail of the tree as well, there's some nice detail within the bark. So what I might end up doing is going up closer to the tree um, and getting a shot of that. But the interesting thing for me is purely down to perspective. So there's a curve in this tree like this, and that curve is only visible from where I am right now. If I go to the left of the tree, the tree points over like to the right. If I obviously go to the other side, it points over to the left. So here is the optimum position to be in. I could go back further to where you are right now and try and compress the scene even further, but I don't think I need to do that. Um, I'll see anyhow like these will turn out here. I'll give you a look at the F4s, and then we'll go down and we'll have a look, a closer look at the tree itself. This is savagery. These midges are relentless. Um, so instead of going down closer to the tree, I actually spotted there's a, a lupine um, between me and the tree. So I've come down quite low, as you can see here, and I've taken a couple of shots. One where I kind of have the lupine out of focus in the front of the image, and then the other is I focused on the lupine, and then the back end of that is soft or um, in bokeh. And I think what that does is it gives a nice bit of depth within the image. Now, overall, what I'm hoping to be able to achieve here by having the camera in both portrait orientation and landscape orientation is two different types of shots, um, but obviously of the same subject. And when it's in focus within the lupine, you kind of get the mystique of the curve that comes around in the back. 
it's a, an experiment. It's always good to experiment, but it's always good, I suppose, to find something that's different. And nature teaches us a number of different lessons, as you know, be different. And if you look at this, this is completely different in relation to the surroundings, like I would have said from the outset. So I'll give you a look at these here, and now we are going to go down below closer to the tree, and we'll see what shots we can get from it from there. So as you can see now from this tree here, at this angle, it's just curving out towards the pathway. So you don't get that natural kind of S-curve that it contains when I'm at that perspective. So I don't think I'm going to get a shot of it from here. Let's go to the other side and let's see what it looks like from there. And once again, as you can see from the other side, it's more or less a mirror image of what we would have had when we were over there. Again, not much of an image to take. It's not as compelling as the first perspective that I would have had there, where it was, like I said, the S-curve in between the straight lines and being different to everything else. But yeah, we'll go up close to it now and we'll see if we can pull something finally to finish up this episode. I hope those midges are enjoying their lunch that they're having on me. Um, coming down closer to it, actually, it's a bit of a challenge to get a different type of shot. I think my perspective from the first shot was probably the best that I could get because even getting closer here, you're shooting up underneath it. You're dealing with a brightness of the sky, the shadow of here. So you have to have a kind of a mixture of an exposure time to be able to either one, get detail in the shadow or number two, to not have highlights blown. But nonetheless, I still think that the original shots that I got were probably the nicest that I would have seen today. So I'm going to finish up this episode. Thank you very much as always for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to watch more videos, I'd recommend this video here. And until the next time, Schlange Fall. Thank you.